Welcome to Key Trades in the wake of what was a strong jobs report, but a weak average hourly earnings report. We got numbers of 242,000 jobs having been created in the US economy in the month of February, and the January number had been revised up from 151,000 to 172. But it was that average hourly earnings that uh, was a little bit of a break on all the proceedings because it came in on a month on negative uh, figure of 0.1% month on month for average hourly earnings, the unemployment rate remaining at 4.9%. Turning now to, to Josh Mahoney's be going through some of the key trades out of this. You've got three key trades for starting with Euro dollar, why? Yeah, euro dollar has been selling off pretty heavily and it's breaking below a key support level now. We did see some sort of resurgence in terms of euro dollar recently. It's not lasted particularly long. I'll show you on the daily time frame and that's a real interesting chart to be looking at because you can see here on the daily time frame we've got this inside trend line coming into play. Support turns into resistance. You can see we've pr touched it perfectly, sold off from that. We've also got a 50-day SMA. On the hourly time frame you can see we've sold down to the again 50 hour SMA and now it looks like we're rallying somewhat. The key here is going to be whether we get a close below this 109.27. If we do get a close below that on the hourly time frame I'd be expe expecting an extension towards the downside. Otherwise you know if we manage to remain above that there's a potential for some sort of bounce but I personally think because of the fact that we've now probed below this level I think we're likely to set ourselves back onto this more negative trajectory for euro dollar. 108.81 is the next support level below that and then you've got the lows here around about 108.25 but you know this has essentially boosted uh, the, the dollar across the board and now we're pushing below some key levels and resuming what is a pretty long-term downtrend for euro dollar and bear in mind we do have expectations for them to uh, be easing next week at the ECB so really it sort of plays into all of the stories here. Let's quickly zip through a couple more of them. You've got also dollar yen. Uh, we've uh, seen a lot of uh, consolidation in the last uh, couple of weeks or so for, for, for dollar yen. Yeah, dollar yen's an interesting one because we're potentially forming this double bottom formation. Uh, we haven't done it but of course you know you should be looking out for things that might happen in the future. 11487 is the neckline for that that needs to be broken. Um, if we look in terms of the hourly time frame, the interesting thing is we've got this sort of triangle formation coming into play. So we do have these higher lows, but alongside that we've had this retracement recently lower with these lower highs. We've now broken out of that and we've broken towards the upside. Again, the key is always whether we get a close on the hourly time frame above your first swing high. On this occasion, 11397, so let's say 114. We get a close up above there, that should give us a nice extension. 11427, 11455, the next resistance point. But it looks like we're likely to extend this move that we've been seeing recently and the sort of retracement that we've been seeing where it continuously comes down to this 11320 with this descending triangle. Looks about, like we're going to break higher. How about the equity indices? So let's, let's talk Dow Industrials. I think we're, we're about 2, 2.1 percent away from the uh, highs that we saw at the beginning of this year. Uh, so as we've almost made up the, the deficit. Yeah, definitely. You know, the US market's been faring a lot better than the European markets, and we've seen that really continue today with the fact that we've been seeing them break to new highs prior to this actual uh, announcement. You can see here on the daily time frame, we've got this double bottom formation. And it was a bit of a tough one, really, because whilst we did get a close up above that neckline, it was a little bit choppy for the first part. But once we actually managed to clear through it, we came back, retested it, and we've now rallied quite heavily from there. The target from that is 17,572. Whether we reach that or not remains to be seen. But certainly this is pointing towards a bit more of an extension towards the upside. 17,140 is your next major sort of area of resistance to come into. But, you know, it's been a pretty remarkable rally that we've seen over the last month with very strong upside. And in terms of retracements, they've lasted one or two days and they've been pretty marginal at best. So it looks like we're likely to see a continuation of that with further upside. This is the hourly time frame. You can see selling off a little bit, but you're going to be looking at previous resistance into support around about 90, uh, sorry, 16,940, 16,9.30 kind of area. As long as that holds up, then we should be able to see another punch higher. Punch high taking to 17,500. Josh, that's great. Thanks so much indeed. That'll take it through to levels not seen uh, since 2015. That's it for today's key trades in the wake of that relatively strong non-farm payroll report.